Hi YouTube, Darth here. We've had a few months now to get acquainted with the Spring Patch, and in just a few weeks we'll have the Summer Patch. In today's video, I'll be talking all about the changes coming up in the Summer Patch and what that means for you. So let's get started. In the last few patches, there have been numerous changes to the netcode of Battlefield 4, and primarily these have been bug fixes, tweaks, and optimizations. One thing that has been in the works for a few months now, but still hasn't made the migration to live servers, is an improved tick rate for Battlefield 4. But that's changing in the Summer Patch. If you're not familiar with the term, the tick rate is the rate at which the server and client communicate with one another. Currently it's locked to 30 Hz maximum, or 30 communications per second, and that's changing to 60 in the summer patch. In order to support the new rate, DiceLA had to rewrite a fair bit of the underlying code that runs the game simulation, which was also locked to 30 Hz. Now what does this ultimately mean for players? Initially, nothing. Support for the new tick rate will roll out on the PC first after the patch has been distributed. Servers will have to figure out if they can support the rate, and players who rent those servers will have to negotiate with their providers. So you'll only see this change if you're on PC, you're on a server that supports 60Hz games, and you can get at least 60 frames per second out of your machine. Because this change is currently only being adopted on PC, the consoles will not see the changes until they can be tested on those platforms. More than likely, this change is never coming to the last generation of consoles as they are locked at 30 frames per second. Eventually, both PC and the newest consoles will support the newer tick rates, and this will translate to more responsive netcode. That's in quotation marks because what it really means is that what you're seeing in your game will be a more accurate picture of what is happening on the server and the connected clients. A poor internet connection can still interfere. One thing that everybody will be able to enjoy with the summer patch is the new night mode of Zavod. While Shanghai and Golmud have their own night map versions, apparently the only one that is confirmed to be in the summer patch is Zavod. I've had the pleasure of playing on the night version of Zavod for the last few months on the CTE, and I can say that it is definitely an interesting revision to one of my favorite maps in Battlefield 4. I think the most unique things about the night version of the map are the way that vehicles and infantry react, and how it slows the gameplay down between points. Because the lights on vehicles are exceptionally noticeable, it's pretty hard to hide in them, and they act as a bug lantern to infantry. However, infantry on this map have a new level of stealth that they can get around on the map with. Obviously, most players are going to equip night sights on this map, but because those sights are slightly longer range, they have a way of pushing out players beyond the normal close quarter distances. It's a great update to one of Battlefield 4's best maps, and I'm excited to just get some new content. And the best part about it is that the map will be free with the summer patch. In support of the tick rate changes, DICE has made some pretty sweeping changes to vehicle turrets. All vehicles have had their turn rates normalized, and at least on PC, the limitations on turning speed and sensitivity have been vastly increased. Now, you won't be able to whip around your vehicle turret instantaneously, but you will notice that it's no longer constrained quite as much by sensitivity. You'll need to adjust the setting to fit your personal preferences once the patch goes live. TV missiles will have a slight improvement in the summer patch. While most of their stats are remaining the same, they will be gaining some slight splash damage, increased damage against soldiers, and a minor maneuverability upgrade. The most noticeable of all of these will be the maneuverability upgrade. On the Summer Patch Alpha build, the missiles are far more flexible in flight than they are on Live. This addresses some complaints about them being far less maneuverable in the Spring Patch. Next up, if you've been peeved about the flashbangs in the game as they are, then be peeved no longer as DICE LA has heard your cries. The new and improved flashbang in the summer patch has an all new effect. It now lasts substantially less time when fully flashed, and you can avoid the effect by looking away from the flash or by not being in its direct blast radius. However, if you are under its effects, you'll now get more completely blinded. Additionally, you will suffer some suppression effects. To offset this, in addition to the flashbang being avoidable, players can now only carry two flashbang grenades instead of three. Hopefully this will not only increase the skill of the grenade, which at the moment is near zero, but will also reduce the spam on maps where it's currently popular. Time will tell. If you've been suffering under the flying bathtub-like physics in the attack jet, you'll be happy to know that the attack jet changes have been reverted and the attack jet now flies as it once did before the spring patch. So it's back to the 313 turning model. As of this video, the weapon changes made in the spring patch remain intact so almost everything still takes just as long to kill. But you're no longer completely helpless against competent stealth jet pilots. DICE LA has indicated that they will be looking at vehicle balance again sometime in an upcoming patch, though that's not a guarantee. A bit of good news on the how long has this bug been around front is that the infamous reload bug has finally been fixed. Have you ever reloaded your weapon, watched your soldier go through all the animation, and then find out you actually didn't reload at all? Well, the bug that's been in the game for several Battlefield titles has now been fixed. 
Barring your own error, you should no longer skip a reload that you thought you had performed. Next up, the tracers in Battlefield went to the gym, worked out, and are now a bit more svelte. In addition to being skinnier, they're also a little bit shorter. What does this mean? Hopefully it will look slightly less like a laser battle in a 1980s cartoon on maps that have a lot of infantry action. And hopefully it will do so without taking too much away from being able to see where your shots are going. Finally, one last change worth mentioning is that by default, servers will have a built-in balancing utility. Now, I don't have access to a CTE server, but I have to assume that this can be disabled in lieu of running third-party balancing utilities. The good news is that for official servers, admins will be able to use this feature to help keep the game more balanced. Presently, things can get out of hand pretty quickly on official servers, and while it might not prevent stacking once the game goes live, it does operate between matches to switch players to a more even configuration. So ultimately, the meat of this summer patch is going to be the tick rate changes, night modes of odd, and rolling back or improving on some of the less popular spring patch changes. Unlike the spring patch, there aren't a huge number of balance changes to chew on, mostly just upgrades to the base game and a free map. So when can we expect this to arrive? Well, it's still in testing on the CTE, and once it's wrapped up, it'll be another 3-4 to four weeks before we see it. Reason being is that the patches still have to go through console certification. If the CTE wrapped up tomorrow, we'd probably see this patch sometime in early September. So rather than a summer patch, this is probably going to be more of a late summer patch. But what do you folks think of the changes? Is there something you'd like to have seen that wasn't in the list? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.